well, thanks for signing in and all that. Um, there's a whole lot of rules and restrictions which you guys are fully aware of. Um, and thanks for your patience with that. I know it makes it um, awkward and hard for you guys. Uh, but thanks for doing that. Um, my name's Michael. Um, I'm the pastor here at Tamworth Baptist Church. I've been here for, I think it's 11 years now. Um, so I remember when Leisha was living here in Tamworth. Um, and I remember Ricky, but I wouldn't recognise you if I walked past you in the street. I don't think you. All of a sudden, you're a young man. Um, and Shelby, uh, you're very different to last time I saw you. Um, but it is great to see you. Um, I do remember you guys um, very well. Um, so thanks for coming. Um, we come here obviously to say farewell to March, to say goodbye. Um, we also come to support each other and gather around together and encourage each other and help each other get through it. But we also come together to find hope. So let me read some words from scripture. Um, these are uh, words that the Apostle Paul wrote to Christians when they were living in the world and working out what happens when people die. It says, We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, concerning those who are asleep. By that he meant those who have died. So that you will not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, in the same way, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. So the Apostle's just saying that um, when we die, um, it's like we're resting and Christ will bring us together again when he returns. That's words of great comfort for those who uh, trust in what Christ has done. Um, and uh, we've chosen um, together a song that we are going to have on the screen. Unfortunately, um, you know we can't sing, but... Um, this song speaks to us of uh, God's great love for us and what he has done for us. Amazing grace. Thank you.
ask permission to come and bring a eulogy. a very difficult time and uh, so much energy is taken up with grieving and um, it's very hard to think about anything else and to put the words together so thank you for that Leisha. Um, what we might do though is, did we get the slideshow to work Nick? We did fantastic, thank you for that Nick. Um, why don't we let the pictures speak for themselves?
Father, we thank you for Marge's life. Thank you that you brought her into our lives and that you blessed us through her. Thank you that we learned lots through her. Thank you for the many joys we shared with her. Thank you for these beautiful photos which remind us of so many good times. We do thank you, Lord God, that um, Marge knew your grace. And though life was hard for her sometimes, um, she had great friends, a family who loved her and was patient with her, and in the last few years um, enjoyed the care she had. We thank you that she knew your grace and had a hope for the future. And I pray, Lord God, that you would give us um, comfort and hope in that. In Jesus' name. Um, it's been said and um, probably can't be said too often that Marilyn was a great friend to Marge um, and was um, often um, there when Marge needed someone or something um, and that's been no less true this last week. Um, Leisha and I were trying to work out what we were going to do today, what would happen and um, we both decided that bringing Marilyn to ask her advice would be the best idea. So um, Marilyn suggested that we read Psalm 23. Uh, which you'll probably remember some of the words for as we read it. It's one of the most well-known psalms. Um, it's been turned into a song. Um, and uh, this is what it says, um, a psalm of David. And it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He renews my life. He leads me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. Um, you may have heard this Bible reading before. It's um, used a lot um, at um, farewell services, funerals, Thanksgiving services like this. And I think that's because it brings comfort at the same time that it speaks of realities of life. Uh, it talks about walking through the, uh, the old translation, say the valley of the shadow of death. Um, in this translation, a modern translation, it says uh, walking through the darkest valley. Um, but it promises that we will live in the house of the Lord forever, as long as I live, those who trust in God. And so it brings comfort in the reality of life. And I think that's important, isn't it? Um, if we're going to find any hope at all, any comfort at all at this time, we don't want it to be some airy-fairy thing that's got no connection to reality. Um, we want it to be an honest, a grounded hope. And one of the realities is that life in this world can be hard. I think life was hard for Marge at times. I know that there were events in her upbringing and in her early life that were hard. That she had to put up with some real difficult things that made her life bleak sometimes. I suspect that sometimes that made Marge a little bit hard herself. Sometimes she wasn't real patient, if I got that right. Sometimes she was a little blunt, um, said what she thought. I'll give you an example of that. Um, on Wednesday night, um, when we, we found out that Marge wasn't well, I went to the hospital um, on Wednesday night to sit with her for a while because she was on her own. And I couldn't find any nurses or doctors who could tell me what the situation was. She was lying in bed. She was struggling to breathe a little and she wasn't able to talk. Um, she um, recognised me and she was looking at me and she was conscious and aware but she didn't say anything. And in that situation I actually chose that psalm to read to her and I, because it's that psalm of comfort, that psalm of hope. And I spoke to her about how that psalm must have been what Jesus was thinking of when he said of himself I am the good shepherd. Um, when Jesus was talking to his disciples, he said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, since he is not the shepherd and doesn't own the sheep, leaves them and runs away when he sees a wolf coming. The wolf snatches them and scatters them. 
This happens because he has a hired hand and doesn't care about the sheep. Whereas Jesus calls himself the good shepherd because he cares about his people. So I was trying to give Marilyn hope and trying to reassure her and um, I couldn't tell um, how she was, whether she was calm, whether she was agitated. All I could see was the medical things that she was struggling to breathe and that she was seriously ill. So I was explaining this to her and she did um, turn, her, uh, turn her head, look at me and she said, when she said, I know. But she said it in that way, I know. And I, I thought there was just that little bit of impatience in that. Stop going on about it, I know that. You don't need to. So I took that as an encouragement to shut up. And an encouragement that she did know that truth. And that's what Marge knew. She knew that the Lord is with her, that he's a shepherd who cares about his people. She knew the truth that Jesus died on a cross because he would lay down his life for his people. And so I would hope that that would be something that you would know for yourself or at least be willing to think about in this time of darkness. These are hard days for you. That you would perhaps know that hope. That there is a God who cares for his people, who would lay down his life for his people. It's an amazing thing to think about. Um, before I came to Tamworth, I was down south um, near Wagga Wagga in a small country town, pastoring a small church there. I remember one of the farmers told me the story. We had about eight years of drought down there. And so um, when the drought gets bad, each paddock has a dam in the corner down there for the water for the sheep. But as the drought goes on, that water goes down. And, and every day, the farmer will drive around and check the dams to see how much water there is. There can be like you know, half a metre of water one day, but if the sheep get in and drink it, and if it's hot and it evaporates, it can disappear very quickly. And it can be a, a day, the next day there's no water there, so they have to keep moving them around, figuring out where's their feed, where's their water. I mean, one day as he was going around the paddocks, um, he found, uh, when he got to this particular dam, that what happens is the silt that's built up over the years is kind of soft and a layer of mud at the bottom of the dam, the water disappears, um, and so there might be like a large um, pan of mud and silt and then just a little bit of water on the surface of that in the middle and two or three sheep getting thirsty could smell the water, see the water and they got into the mud to try and get to the water but um, all their wool, the thick coat, they just get dragged down by the mud and heavy and they can't get out. So the farmer parked his ute on the bank of the dam and looked at his sheep in the mud they're going to die. They can't get themselves out, they're too heavy. And so what he did is when he said to his son, we've got to go in and get them. They um, do it the rough way, take a rope in, um, tie it to the sheep, put it on the ute, and help them bit by bit drag them out. But he looked at himself, and he looked at the mud and the sheep, and he thought, this isn't going to work. There's no way I'll be able to get to a scared sheep get a rope around it and get out without getting muddy. So he took his watch off and took his boots off. And his son took his watch off and took his boots off. And they looked at each other and said, it's not going to work either. So they took shirts, uh, jeans, everything off, just to get out of their undies, because they realized if we go into this dam to try and help this ship, there's no way we're going to come out without mud all over us. And they were right. They got in there, the sheep struggling, they're struggling, they're trying to, and they came out filthy. They uh, walked back to home, hosed themselves off before they came back down and got in the youth because they were just so filthy. The thing he said to me was, he was just thankful. Um, he had a, his farm was on the main road. He was just thankful it wasn't the dam in the front corner paddock where everybody driving past would see him in his undies getting into the dam. But that's what the Bible tells us God does for us. You see, this is a, a troubled world, isn't it? There is pain, there is suffering. There's hard, hardness and hardship that hits us. And sometimes we do that to others. And yet God, seeing all that mess, chooses to come into our lives, into our world, to put up with that, that he might rescue us. That that psalm might come true for us. That the Lord is with us that he's a good shepherd who cares for us. 
and in that last verse, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. That's the truth for Marge. That's where she is now. She dwells in the house of the Lord forever now. He is with us. Marge is with him. And I hope that, maybe without any patience, you might be able to say, I know that too. I know. When we can say that, I know this is true, it's a great comfort and a great foundation for our lives to live. I'm going to ask Marilyn now if she might come to the front and pray for you. just wanted to say a little bit to start with before I pray um, about how I met Marge. So I first met Marge at South Tamworth Church of Christ and I couldn't work out when we arrived by there was this woman in the front seat always crying. Then and I met the minister's wife there said, she took me aside one day she said, explain to me what a rough time she'd been having for the last two years after the tragic death of her son David. She also asked me if I would take her under my wing to cheer her up. So we walked and we talked and we cried for about six months. But that began a friendship that lasted for 29 years. Through thick and thin, good times and bad. Marge and I had a lot in common. Love of cats, red clothes, morning coffee, we have a lot of those together, but mainly our love of God. I understood her anxieties, her sense of humour, when she'd say something crazy and then say to you, just joking. <laughs> Talisha and her family, Debbie and her family and Sue, I know that she loved you all deeply, even though she could be frustrating at times. The last few years were hard for her, with all of the family a long way away. But I tried to keep in touch as much as possible, and while she could, and when she felt up to it, take her out for coffee. I know that now she is with her Lord, and free from tears, heartache and pain. And one day I will see her again. So let's just now pray for Marge. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this precious soul who has gone to be with you. Thank you for her life lived in her love for her family and her love and service for you. Even though times were tough for her, she always clung to her faith and would sing praises to you. I especially pray for her family at this time, that you would comfort them in their loss of their mother, Nan and Great Nan. May they feel your loving presence as they grieve for March. I just pray that each one of her family will seek you as March would have wanted. I thank you, Lord, for the promise that when we put our faith and trust in you, all things work together for those who love you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we're going to say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
that Balrun has been turned into a hymn, and he's going to put that on the screen for us now.